There's a couple different kind of predators that you kind of need to worry about. There's obviously ground predators, you know, like uh, coyote and fox, raccoon, um, possums, fisher cats, weasels, minks, sometimes skunks. And there's probably a whole slew of other kind of ground predators depending on what climate you live in. Then there's also aerial predation, which is anything coming from above in the sky, you know, like hawks and eagles, falcons, <laughs> owls. You also have to be aware that some ground predators can climb up over things like fences and such. So another couple predators that a lot of people don't really think about, and those are our pets, cats and dogs. And I'm talking about your own and your neighboring properties because cats love to kill baby chicks. Even small chickens, when they just get out of the brooder, they need to be protected. Not all dogs are like our Molly and Olive, you know. There's a lot of dogs that like to chase things and when they're dealing with chickens, they will kill chickens. So be very weary of the pets. One thing I suggest is not free ranging your birds. If you live in an area where it's really prone to predators and you're having problems, just don't free range your birds. Simple as that. So we have that here at our farm. Coyotes are rampant, foxes are rampant. And what we did is we built this structure. There's seven coops in here and then there's seven runs. This is one of the runs. And you know, there's like a separate coop, separate coop, separate coop. We do have a plan to free range some of the birds. In the future, I'm gonna build a whole fence all around this area, but that's only gonna be supervised daytime free ranging. Chickens are supposed to go back to the coop, but I mean, there's a lot of daytime predators too. Like look at our area here. It's so wide open. There's hawks all the time, red tail hawks. Yeah, so these chickens have the hardware cloth and they have a roof, you know, gotta have a roof. It's very important that they do have some kind of housing and they do have some kind of protected run if you don't want to lose your birds to predators. Now, if you're looking to keep chickens long term, like for a long time, there is going to be a little bit more of an upfront investment to build your coop with your run. You can obviously just build a coop and then just let your birds out and theoretically they'll go back at the end of the night but to each his own it's up to you to make that decision and it's up to you to be aware of the types of predators that are in your area i also think it's very important to protect your chicken feed in our case here we have these garbage cans filled with the feed and i also keep feed in an inside here i got duck feed i got the scratch and we have another tub full of scratch and these are rodent proof receptacles you know they're just those aluminum cans that you can get from any hardware store and they do a really good job of keeping the moisture out of your feed and the rodents out of your feed i'm sure lots of predators would also like to eat the chicken feed so to me in my opinion it's very important to protect the feed now the coop that we built here, it's got a wood roof with shingles and it's fully protected from the aerial predators. I've actually watched a lot of YouTube videos that are using chicken wire over the roof. You know, they use hardware cloth on the walls, but chicken wire on the roof. And I don't really get that. If, you're, <laughs> if you have predators, the predators are gonna rip right through the chicken wire because chicken wire is only intended to keep chickens in. It is not intended to keep predators out and it will not work. Even the, the smallest of raccoons and possums can get through the chicken wire. So make sure you're aware of that. Now for the benefit of anybody who doesn't know the difference between chicken wire and hardware cloth, here you go. Chicken wire is this stuff. You see, it's got like one inch hexagonal holes and I mean, if I actually use my strength, you can see that it's stretching. And I mean, if I was a Hulk, I could just rip through this and I'm sure any coyote can <laughs> and they'll just get through it. They can even bite this stuff. And it, you know, it's like, it's not very 
durable. Hardware cloth, on the other hand, is this stuff. And I don't know why they call it cloth. It's kind of a, you know, an oxymoron kind of thing. Because it's not a cloth, it's, it's hard metal. And it's really thick and rigid. And it's actually quite difficult to work with, you know, because you can easily cut yourself once you start cutting it. You have to wear gloves, you have to be really careful. And uh, you can get this stuff in most hardware stores. It is a lot more difficult to get and a lot more expensive than chicken wire. And I think that's why a lot of people are just using the chicken wire. But it's not going to work for you people. And again, in my structure that I built here, the entire exterior of the coop is this hardware cloth. You see this? And it's basically stapled, you know, every eight inches. There's no way that a predator is going to get in here. You also want to be sure that when you're stapling it to your structure, you staple it on the outside in case any of the animals want to push on it it's going to be held together by the structure. If you staple it from the inside and you start pushing it, it's only held by the staples. Now I did use chicken wire in our structure, you know. I have chicken wire on the doors, I have chicken wire on the windows, and I actually have chicken wire separating the coops. And that just allows me to separate the breeds, you know, so that I don't produce barnyard mixes. I, I'd like to deal with only purebreds. So we have black leghorns, Rhode Island reds, and light Sussex. And there's a divider wall inside each one of the seven coops. It's actually six coops, I'm lying, because there is one coop right there that's not done. <laughs> but there will be seven coops, I promise. We'll have these custom made nesting boxes for the birds. They seem to love it. I'm also a big proponent of keeping roosters in your flock. Now I understand there's a lot of townships and municipalities that don't allow roosters because of the noise problem. But if you live on you know, a country style farm or homestead or even like an off grid type property, in my opinion, it's better to have roosters. Roosters will scare off any smaller type predators and they will defend their flock. And you also get the added bonus of being able to hatch your own chicks because now you have fertile eggs. A guard dog or a livestock guardian dog is also another option to thwart predators and they're very good at keeping predators away from the vicinity simply by barking but not everybody is able to have a livestock dog. There's also different types of coops out there, right? There's the type of coop that sits on the ground, like the structure that I build here, and there's also the type of coop that's raised up off the ground, you know, like on stilts. They're not usually too high, maybe two feet high and whatnot, but those are the two different types that I've ever seen. A lot of people like the coop that's raised up off the ground because you don't have any problem with digging. You're still gonna need some kind of a security apron around the perimeter of your run because the run is always gonna be on the ground. In our case here, the entire structure is sitting on paver stones and then we have pressure treated wood and then we have the wood structure and then we have the hardware cloth on the outside, full protection. Now, if your coop is on the ground like ours, another great tip, one of the best, is to install a security apron around the perimeter of the ground. And I don't have that on my coop, and I'm gonna start working on that today, and I'm gonna show you how exactly I'm gonna do it. You can see that something has already started to dig under there. We do have paver stones, but Something's digging. So when it comes to your security apron that's gonna go on the ground around the perimeter of your coop, there's a couple options. The easiest option is this hardware cloth stuff. It's easily bendable and what you do is you put it on the ground and you just bend it up along the wall of your coop. The option that I'm going with on our coop is this type of fencing. It's almost like a two inch by two and a half, three inch coated it's like a vinyl coated wire you know
also these things that I'm going to be using. They're like six inch landscape fabric staples and that's just going to help me hold the security apron down into the ground so it doesn't keep rolling up on you. And then if any animal wants to start digging down there, they're going to dig for like an inch and then boom, they're going to hit the wire and they can't go anymore. Now I'm going to cover this all with some nice soil. We'll plant some nice grass seed here in the spring and it's going to be looking good and completely safe for all of our jokes. Hope you enjoyed the video folks. Hope it helps in case you're building a new coop or starting to plan out a new coop or if you're having predator trouble and <laughs> you need to figure out what are you going to do to protect your coop. Anyways, appreciate you watching. Don't forget to pound the like and subscribe to the channel. You'll see more of this incredible work of art chicken house, the Chateau du Palais. And if you want to see some of the build of this thing, I built it myself, complete solo build. And I mean, I'm pretty proud of it, as you can tell. I'll put a link down right here and you can keep on watching for me. And I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks.